Hey everybody, how's it going? Hope you're having a lovely day. So if you didn't need more reasons to be depressed other than all of what you see in the news, there is even more. So I've talked on this channel about DRM in your all-in-one printer, where if you have a printer, scanner, fax machine, photocopier, and it runs out of ink, it will no longer scan. That was one thing. Then you also had Canon actually instructing users on how to ignore and bypass the error messages in their own ink cartridges because their own printer with ink DRM was trying to tell you that maybe the ink cartridge you put in is counterfeit, which is absolutely hysterical. And Dymo takes the cake here because we're now no longer talking about DRM in your ink, DRM in your scanner. We are talking about DRM for your paper. So Dymo has a label printer, very popular, called the 450. Most repair shops like mine use it to place labels in customer laptops. They don't use ink. It's a thermal printer, meaning that it uses paper that when you heat it, it winds up showing stuff on it, whatever it is you want it to print. And they're very handy. You don't have to worry about ink. You don't have to worry about things smearing or anything like that. They're nice little label printers. They just keep working and rocking. And they, they make sense for use in a place like ours. Now, the problem with these printers is the cost of the label. So if you take a look, you'll see that if you want to buy the Dymo labels, they're usually pretty costly and you're not getting a lot of rolls for your $15.99. Whereas if you're willing to buy, you know, some other random brand, you can get like an entire stack of labels for a similar price, which is what we do at our repair shop. Now, to be fair to Dymo, they're not all the same. The Dymo labels typically come off of customer laptops easier than the most garbage knockoff. There are decent knockoffs out there, but you gotta look for them or else they kind of leave residue behind, which is something that we learned very painfully with what I'll show in this video at the end that I'm sure people who were around the channel back in 2018, 2019 likely remember to know him. Now, you could see some of the reviews on this printer. Somebody says, great printer with anti-consumer technology built right in. I'm very glad that he gave it a one star for this, regardless of how good a printer it is. Dymo decided to add unnecessary product lockout to their Label Writer 550. They have added an RFID tag to authenticate that you are using only official Dymo labels for quality or something. You know, because you're very concerned about the museum quality of the label you're printing. The RFID also counts how many labels you have left because looking in the printer is just too hard. In the first world hellscape we live in. Instead of offering that as just a feature, they've decided it should be used to make sure that you don't use any of those third-party labels you have on hand. No, you need to only be using Dymo labels. Retailers have been getting so much blowback for this that they are actually including it in bold print. Note, the Label Writer 550 cannot work with old stock of Dymo labels and neither with compatible labels. New Dymo labels have an RFID chip embedded in the roll and the 550 will not print if this chip is not detected. So you bet your ass that the people that are actually selling this printer are dealing with lots of returns and chargebacks and people saying that it is broken because most sane people in the United States across the world, when they buy a printer, they expect it to just fucking print to the paper you put in the fucking printer. Now, you do have the case where the printer, you know, again, one of the ways that they make money is by selling you accessories and ink and all that. But since they can't sell you ink because it's a thermal printer that is printing by putting heat on the paper, they are now going to try to DRM the paper to keep you from using anything else. And they're going to claim it's for quality and your convenience. No, it's not. It's so that you will buy the more expensive paper. Now, again, to be fair to Dymo, their stock paper is better than the cheapest knockoff paper. You will notice a difference in the quality of it. It doesn't fade as quickly. And when you remove the label, it does not leave that garbage residue that the absolute garbage cheapest label does. That being said, there are many, many, many companies producing labels of high quality that do not leave behind nasty residue when you peel them, that are very clean, that stay their color, and that keep the and that keep whatever you printed on it for a very long time into the future. That costs less than Dymo. If you bought the printer, you should be able to choose what paper you put in that effing printer, not the company. Now, you may think, well, people are going to eventually hack this and get around it. Why do you care? Uh, you know, one of the reasons is that it is actually against the law to do so. So there is something called Section 1201 of the Digital Millennium Copyright Act. That's the part of the DMCA that made tools like DVD decryptor illegal, you know, almost uh, like 18 years ago. One of the reasons that you couldn't have that tool is because being able to bypass the copy protection on a DVD so you could rip that DVD that you own and put it on your Cohen A2 portable media player. I can't believe I had one of these things back in the day. I don't know if any of you are even old enough to remember that in my audience, but Remember this thing? I had one of these in 2005. It was so cool. Anyway, if you wanted to rip your DVD that you paid for and put it on your portable media player, you that you were 
technically in some way, shape, or form breaking the law because you are bypassing Section 1201 of the DMCA, bypassing the protection. If you want to make a shipping label or a, you want to make any sort of label that works in this printer by bypassing their bullshit DRM, you're technically breaking Section 1201 of the DMCA, which is one of the things that drives me nuts when you'll hear these lobbyists that talk about innovation from a very libertarian perspective, a very small government perspective, if you simply walk up to them when they're talking about all of this potential government interference in the marketplace, and you simply say, okay, cool, let's have a handshake. You're an anarcho capital? Okay, cool. Let's get rid of Section 12.1 of the DMCA. The first thing you hear from all of them is, whoa, 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 whoa never mind. It's like, yeah, exactly. You don't want it when it when it hurts you, but you want it when it benefits you. And it's just, it's so disingenuous and it's so disgusting. We're actually doing some work uh, to try and kind of modify or amend or get more exceptions that are permanent rather than these bullshit carve-out exceptions that we have to fight for every single year for Section 1201 of the DMCA. And I think more people should be aware of this because you will get to a point in the future where if Section 1201 of the DMCA stands, you will literally be at a point where you are doing something wrong by putting a different brand of paper in your printer than the brand that the company says you're allowed to. And it's just, it's disgusting to me how with each passing year, we are willing to accept less freedom. And as you can see on Amazon, this gentleman over here gave it one star. Good for him. I don't care if this printer prints money that you could actually use in a store. I would still give it one star for this. This printer got 4.7 out of five stars. So the sad reality is that, again, over 7,000 ratings, is that your average, everyday, ordinary consumer, yeah, not the, not the people, type of people that watch this channel regularly, but your ordinary consumer buys this and is like, oh yeah, that's fine. Yeah, just feed me more shit. Yeah, just take away more of my freedom. I'll still give you five star. I was expecting to click this and see that this label printer had a, you know, like a three or a two star rating. Because I don't know anybody that buys these things and buys the brand name labels because they cost a lot more money. And most people out there that are buying a cheap black and white label printer are not buying this because they want to print a replica of the Mona Lisa for their living room. They're buying it to put stuff like to do or like, you know, put something like tax filings on a cabinet. They're not buying it for the artistic quality of the labels. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. Do you, you think that Section 1201 of the DMCA is reasonable or that it should go? Would you support a company that does this? Would you buy this label printer versus buying a used older model or from another company if they started telling you you're not allowed to use other people's paper in our printers and actually enforced it? And above all, does it depress you in any way, shape, or form to see that a product like this has 4.7 out of 5 stars on a major platform? Because I'll be honest, it sure as hell depresses me. That's it for today. And as always, I hope you learned something. I'll see you all in the next video. Bye now. But actually, before we uh, call it quits here, I will just play you all a classic. After the meal. Awesome, Craig, you're not going to help you. Yeah, I wanted to call and let you know that I am uh, incredibly, intensely aggravated that I just got my computer back with a label on it that was near Almost. impossible to remove. Um, so I'm not sure how that became a practice there because I've sent my computer to you numerous times before and it's never come back with a sticker on it that it took me 25 minutes in Gugon to remove mm -hmm. but I wanted to let you know that's a disgusting practice of complete disrespect for your customers thank uh, you so much have a great day sure okay uh, if you want to talk about it I can talk if you'd like. that label each of those labels that we took off of that computer was a knockoff label, not a Dymo original. Just saying. See you in the next video.